Hello and welcome to my channel, On The Hook Crochet, where we talk about wearable crochet style. And today, let's find out what's been on the hook. I hope you had a great weekend. I did. I always have a great weekend. always have a great week. <laughs> I guess it's mostly attitude. But I'm just glad to be here, glad to wake up each morning and feel fairly good and able to bring you some content about crochet. That's why I'm here. I'm excited so I can bring you things that you can look at, maybe be inspired by or have some information that you can build on in your own crochet wardrobe. So, or if you just want to watch, um, that's fine too. Uh, sometimes I look at knitting channels and I know I'm not knitting right now, but I do enjoy watching people explain their creations and show you what they've made. So I really like um, all kinds of different channels and I do uh, watch them quite a bit while I'm crocheting. So that kind of combines everything together. Again, I hope you had a great weekend and today I am going to bring you a finished object which you probably recognize. If you watch my show you will know that I've been working on this Malabrigo Archangel sweater for a while. I wanted to, here's the pattern that I use. This is my pattern and it's out on my Etsy shop and it's called Archangel and the first time through, I made this from Malabrigo Rios yarn in the colorway Archangel, so I named it that after the color of the yarn. But I made it again, and I made several changes to it. I want to show those to you today. I also have a progress on a scarf that I'm working on, and we have a giveaway for fluffy yarn, Mandela Fluffy, some yarn and a finished object. So let's get started. First of all, I want to show you my sweater that I just made. I'm so excited. This is the most comfortable sweater that I've ever made. And I really, I really am serious about that. This is a wool sweater and the yarn is called Malabrigo Rios. And if you watch me at all, you know that I love Malabrigo. It's an affordable luxury yarn. It's hand-dyed. It's quite lovely. The yarn is made in Peru, and it's the worsted. The one that I used for this particular sweater is the Malabrigo worsted in the colorway Rosalinda. And there's the tag that comes on it. It's Malabrigo worsted. And the particulars on this, there are 210 yards on the hank, 100 grams. So for this particular sweater, that I'm wearing, and I'll stand up and show it to you in a second here. I have 42, uh, I have one and a half ounces or 42 and a half grams left out of the last hang. So the total yardage that I used for this particular sweater was 1,050 for my size. And I made this in a boxy fit, and that would be, you know, maybe a, a good size medium, maybe even a large. I expanded the sizes. I have probably four inches of V's all the way up and then um, on this particular pattern the sleeves are crocheted right into the fabric. I had a question from a viewer um, this week and she had asked about how you put the other sleeve in the fabric. Well you put them in actually you crochet them in at the same time so you don't just start on one side and do all this. You actually crochet from one end to the other. I'll show you a little bit more about that in a second. On the original sweater that I show here, this is also Malabrigo. I made both out of the same type of yarn, different colors. Uh, I used a yellow clover, which is a 7.0. It's a good size hook on the original. That's what I wrote in the pattern. I used this one. On the one I'm wearing now, I used a J hook and I used a 6.0, uh, quite a bit smaller hook. And it gives it a little bit smaller stitch and so it uses a tiny bit more yarn as well. But I felt like for the coverage I wanted, I did not want to have to wear a blouse underneath. I wanted to be able to wear this right next to my skin. It is so soft and so warm it's wool and so I'm just not used to that here in Tennessee <laughs> but I do like the fact that it's wool and I found some wool that I really like up against my skin. On the original sweater I chained up with an L hook which is an 8.0 that's the pink clover and then I made the fabric from the 7.0 yellow clover. 
I did not do that this time. I used a J hook all the way through and then to do the neck edging and the sleeve edging, I used an eye hook. I went down one size and used an eye hook. So you have to experiment. I experimented on this. I made this one basically from a different size hook, the same yarn, different size hook, different neckline, different edgings. There were quite a few things that were different. And the start up at the bottom um, of the fabric where you, you start from the bottom to crochet, you crochet up, I even started differently. So let me bring Crystal over. She's been dying to get on our program. She just stands over there and goes, what about me? <laughs> so I have uh, dressed Crystal in the original Archangel sweater and I'm going to compare the two. Before I do that though, let me stand up and let me show you this one. This is my second version of the Archangel sweater. I'll step back here so you can see it. This is a boxy fit. Now you can see that it's goes straight down for the most part. I did not put ribbing at the bottom of this sweater. I have discovered I really don't like ribbing at the bottom of crocheted sweaters. I don't know why on me, on you it might be great, but on me I really don't like the ribbing around the bottom. It hugs and it makes the sweater look short. To me, it makes me look short. So I really like just leaving the bottom unedged. Now it does look nice. I started with a foundation chain and it was half double foundation all the way around on both uh, back and front fabric. So that that's how I finished the bottom of this particular Archangel. So uh, let me turn around. I'll show it to you. See how it looks in the back and it's just a boxy fit again the sleeves are different as well and this the sleeves are fairly similar but i finished them and made almost like a bishop sleeve out of them and i'll show you how that works um let me get crystal over here and we'll talk about our archangel sweater okay here's crystal and she's modeling my archangel sweater out of the Malabrigo Archangel color, which is quite gorgeous. It's purples and oranges, and it's very, very bright. Um, and this, I chose a more subtle color, of course. It's the Rosalinda color. But I wanted to show you the differences between these two sweaters. Now, I always uh, advise people who buy my patterns to make them more than once. And you probably know this. You, When you buy other patterns, you probably make them more than once. But I really encourage that because I made a lot of changes on this second version that I want to show you and I would advise you to or recommend actually I would recommend that you make the sweater the way I directed in the pattern the first time through or make your own changes then it as well and then make it again and perfect it make it just how you want it and that I have found that I make all my patterns at least twice um, even though I publish a pattern, I will make it again either for someone else or for myself. And I want to be sure that I make the changes that I really, really like. And when I do that, I will come on my show and I will show you what I've done differently. I've done that several times. So I want to show you this one. This is the original. I used ribbing around the neck. Now, I've talked about this before but the neckline is much lower and much wider than the new version of the Archangel. I used ribbing here. I did not rib the neck. And I'll get up here where you can see it. This is a single crochet border edging and I love it. I really do. I am not a huge proponent of ribbing, although I will rib things in my patterns. I've done that several times and I did it here on the original Archangel, but I, unless it's knitted, I really don't love, love the ribbing around on an edging on crochet. I, I just don't like the way it looks. It's okay, but it's not, um, it doesn't look like crochet. I really like a sweater to be um, very crocheted. <laughs> I guess that's how I could put it. So I like the neck edging out of single crochet. Now I'll show you how I shape this as well in here in just a second. The sleeves on the original are as wide as they are here. I think I might have made this a tiny bit wider, the sleeve itself. 
because you make that determination when you start the sleeve here under the arm and you crochet the sleeve into the fabric the more rows you put on that particular part of your sweater the more rows you crochet the wider the sleeve will be at the bottom the wider it will hang down but you can bring that to a, wit a wrist size you can easily do that and I show you in the pattern how to do that and I actually did that on this particular sweater I did the same thing and the, but the edging is different I edge this with a single crochet edging now on this one I did the same thing but I I put a ribbing at the bottom I ribbed the bottom of the sweater sleeve so I brought the sweater together here and then I added the ribbing on this one I brought the sweater together here and I added the single crochet edging and it's actually you know it, it gives enough to get your hand through there and to be comfortable and the ribbing I didn't find stretched as well it stretches okay but this sweat stretches just as well it's a lot quicker to crochet and I think it looks prettier I really do I like the ribbing just fine if you are a ribbing person then go ahead and rib but uh, the second time through I thought I am not ribbing that I'm going to just use a single crochet edging and I love the way it turned out now Crystal's sweater is more of a fit well you can't really see that well I guess you can uh, it's more of a fitted to my body I put less ease in this I didn't put as much ease in this particular sweater so it fits a little bit closer to my body I was looking for a more comfortable fit and to me that's a boxy sweater where you can just sit down and it's not you don't have to pull it down and when you stand up it just falls in place so that's one reason I really like boxy sweaters and I really like wearing them because they're so comfortable and after a large meal you're not tugging at it and it doesn't show every roll <laughs> in your body so I like the way they fall straight down and this one isn't too bad but it was a little bit tighter fit so I don't think I used as many yards to make this one reason is because there's not much crocheting up here there's a big space open while on this one it's you know it's only cut down just a little bit not much in the front I did not shape a neckline in the back on this one either just like this one I did not shape the neckline I just crocheted straight over now let me talk about the sleeves real quick because I did have a question about this when you're making for example let's let's do the front turn around here crystal she's <laughs> she's getting dizzy I'll turn her around too much all right so when you're crocheting the front of this sweater fabric you start at the bottom again I used a foundation half double crochet on this sweater I chained up with a larger hook and then I crocheted the fabric with a smaller hook and you can do it either way when you chain up with a larger hook and then crochet up you'll find that there's there's much less give around the bottom of your sweater and if you're if you're about that if you want it to be tight you don't want it to be um, moving out of shape and I'm not sure if this one will do that or not I don't think it will um, you can chain up and then use a smaller hook to to crochet your fabric but on this one I used a foundation half double crochet I don't know if you can see that I used a foundation half double crochet and it's you know it's it's very flexible it gives a lot more than a chain and then starting your fabric with a smaller hook you can do it either way um, but I used a foundation half double crochet to start my fabric so I did a row of that and then I started my half double crochet rows and, cr and crocheted across and then when you get to this point on the, the for the for the front of your fabric when you get to this point you make a decision how long do I want my sleeve so you chain out that long and of course you want to leave enough um, on the end of your sleeve to create the edging however you want to do the edging so you'll crochet back and forth until you get to this point and then you chain out however long you want the sleeve then you move back across here and then you chain out on the other side and you go two or three rows I guess until you get to the bottom of your neckline so you crochet from here up here to the neckline and then you decide how low you want your neckline if you want your, and I started mine right here see because this is the edging 
I started my neckline right here so that um, when I was crocheting my sleeves, I wasn't finished with the sleeves yet. I stopped here and then I crocheted the rest of the front of the fabric, including the sleeve. Then I joined my yarn again and I crocheted this side of the front of my fabric. So that at that point I'm still, I'm crocheting that sleeve too. As I move across, I'm crocheting that sleeve. And so then I have the whole front of the fabric. The back of the fabric is easier because you start at the bottom, you decide how long your sleeves are gonna be. And if you've done the front first, then you wanna match that number of course of chains from here to the end of your sleeve. You wanna make sure that's the same because they have to match up. Then you crochet across, sleeve to sleeve to sleeve. You're crocheting this huge line. But then when you get through, your, your sleeves are done, which is kind of nice. You go all the way to the top. I did not shape the neckline. So I crocheted straight across the top. And then I, when I put the two pieces together, I used the front shoulder as the measurement. So I would lay my fabric on each other, the front to the back, right sides together, make sure the sleeves are even at the bottom and that they they are lined up and then i started sewing them together at the end of the sleeve all the way up to as far as the front would go and then i stopped i did the same thing on the other side so that's a little bit about the structure of this sweater it's not difficult to do once you have it all crocheted it's pretty easy i mean you this you have to sew it here, and then you sew an underarm seam from the end of the sleeve here to the bottom of the fabric. So that's how this Archangel is constructed, and I thought you might like to see that. Um, I hope that helps um, the young lady who wrote me and asked me um, when does she create this sleeve. But actually you create both sleeves at the same time, you just don't finish them. You finish one side and then you finish the other side. But you do establish them at the same time. You do several rows and then you complete one half of the front. Then you jump over here and complete the other half of the front. The back is very simple, like I said. So that's a little bit about the structure of the Archangel pattern. You can get it on my Etsy shop if you want to uh, give it a go. I really liked it. You can make this out of any yarn. I mean, you can even make it out of a size three if you want to. Just um, lower your hook size a little bit and you'll have it. And experiment. Make a swatch and see if you like the way the fabric looks in your yarn. Make sure you have a thousand or twelve hundred yards of that yarn or that you can obtain that somehow on the web or at Joann's or wherever you, you bought the yarn. But I always buy more yarn than I need. So I ended up with only half of a hank left because I didn't put much space up here. I used a lot of yarn and uh, it's a boxy fit. It's a little bit wider across on the body. So I used a little bit more yarn than I did on my original because this one fits a little tighter and the neck is a little bit lower. So you can kind of gauge how many yards you might need. On your second pass of any pattern that you're using, you will find that, that you're more confident with that yarn. You feel uh, like you know you're gonna like it because it fits right. And you've made some changes so that the neck and the arms and the body shape are what you want and they are perfect. I think the jeans yarn would be awesome in this sweater. Uh, the jeans yarn by Lion Brand, not sponsored by Lion Brand at all. But I do love the jeans yarn. I've made several things out of that. It's very soft and it's a size four. So it would go along with this particular pattern and be a little bit easier to make than trying to change the yarn size. But you could certainly use a size three if you wanted to. So uh, again, this is my second pass at the Archangel sweater. I really like it. I'll stand up again and show it to you. And the sleeves too, I wanted to show you that. I made them a tiny bit longer on this as well. And um, that makes them into a little bit blousier sleeve at the bottom and some might even call that a bishop sleeve. It's a, a kind of a bell-shaped sleeve but when you pull it together it makes it easier to wear. It stays in place. It doesn't, it's not like a bell sleeve. It's not going to be dragging on things and getting wet when you wash your hands or anything like that. So uh, I really like the sweater. I'm glad that I made it again. It was 
a long time coming. I, it took me a while to make it because I was making other projects at the same time, but um, I'm really enjoying this. I, I'm going to wear it all day and see how it turns out. But again, I'm not wearing a shirt under it. I made it in a smaller, with a smaller hook so that um, I could wear it next to my skin without having to wear even a tank top under it. So I'm really excited. I really like it. I hope that helped you if you're making a sweater like this to kind of understand how those sweaters made and uh, some of the changes that I made from the original pattern to my second pass, which I always recommend that you do. This weekend, I went through my office and I straightened it up. I straightened up my wall of yarn over there. I, I moved some of my carts. I had some um, carts that I had bought from Joanne. I love them. They're rolling carts. And actually, Summer of Summer's Tips and Stitches just put one together live last week, which is very bold, <laughs> but she did a nice job. I jumped on and watched it for a while, and she was doing a great job. And I had actually put mine together too, so I sent her a couple of tips. But she did a really nice job with her live uh, broadcast. I've straightened up my office. I've done some things to it. I've moved some books around. I gave some books away, not crochet books, but just fiction books that I already read and I didn't want to read them again. So I took them out of my bookshelf. I put all my crochet books in one spot because I had them in three different spots. And I have them all over there where I can see them. I can walk over. I can grab one for reference. And I've been buying crochet books. I had another book come in yesterday that I had forgotten that I ordered. Of course, that happens quite often with me. But I uh, have several books that I'd like to review. And also, The Romantic Crochet, I haven't reviewed that yet. I'd like to do that as well. So I have to figure out when I'm going to do these book reviews. If I'm going to do one at a time or if I'm going to do one video with all of them in there, I don't know how I'm going to do it. But I don't have time today to do that because I wanted to show you this sweater. And I also want to show you, um, well, back to my office. I, I found a lot of yarn that I'm going to give away. I have a huge bag, and I don't know if you can see it. You probably can't see it. It's behind my heart back here. And it's a huge shopping bag, you know, the ones that you get at Joann's. But the biggest one I've ever seen. I just went ahead and filled it up with all the yarn that I probably won't be working with. And some of it's really super duper. I just, um, I've run out of time and I have enough whips over here to keep me busy for a while. And I want to work through some of those and get them off my plate. So uh, that big bag of yarn is going to be going out to y'all and a little at a time so that I can afford to ship it. It costs a lot to ship now. I guess y'all know that. And I don't want to ship overseas. So if you happen to win one of my giveaways with a yarn, I will, if you live in another country, I will email you a PDF of the pattern of your choice from my Etsy shop. I'll be glad to do that, but I will not be sending yarn to England where it would cost me four or five times the cost of the yarn to send it to somebody. I just, to me, that doesn't seem logical. I would rather you have a pattern. You can go to your local yarn shop and buy some nice yarn and make that pattern. So that's what happens in the giveaways. I don't always say that, but I did want to say that today. I'd like to talk about a whip that I'm working on. And if you're on my Instagram, you will have seen some pictures of this. This is a scarf that I'm making out of Vita Lana, which is a knit crate product. It came in my monthly subscription box. And this is the scarf. And I have started the border. I have not, absolutely not finished the border yet. I've got several rows left to do. I'm crocheting the base row on it now. I'm just a little bit past halfway. I'm not even in the ballpark yet, but I did want to do that. And this is the, I finished the scarf part, and I think I might have shown this to you already. It is a triangle scarf. It's quite long. It's about six feet long, and it, so it wraps around um, twice around my neck and has a little bit of extra so it's nice I haven't had a big scarf like this in a long time and I decided to just make one and I'll put the pattern out there sometime soon it'll have a more beautiful border on it than the scarf itself the scarf itself is very very plain and it's just increased all up one side not on the other so it's got a straight bottom on it and it's um, then it's slanted up toward the point of the triangle and back down. So this is 
Not the softest scarf I've ever made. I'm being honest here. The Vitalon is nice yarn, but it's not very soft. Now, I'm going to soak this in some, um, I think they call this Rapture. But this has Stellina in it. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can. Look, all that bling in there. It is quite beautiful. And the yarn that I'm doing the border in is also a blingy yarn. It's also a blingy yarn. So the whole thing will be blingy, but I'm, it's going to have to be a little bit softer for me to really want to grab it and wear it often. So that's what I'm working on right now. I'm trying to finish this up. I finished my sweater and I'm working on my scarf. And I have, as I said, I went to my office and I found a lot of whips that I need to finish. I, I found some things that I was almost finished with and I just put them down and I forgot about them. And you may be the same way, I don't know. <laughs> That's just me. So I have them lined up over here and I'm gonna to try to finish some of these in the next couple of weeks. I'm gonna work really hard to finish a nice sweater that I started with some yarn that Creative Grandma, Glenda there, had uh, given me and it, it was quite gorgeous and I started a sweater and I really had the thing sewn together and all I was doing putting the sleeves in it and I just stopped. I don't know what happened. I was distracted and there was a squirrel that went by. I totally forgot what I was doing. So I needed to get my whips together and I've done that. I've cleaned off my yarn, my bookcase, and so now I'm ready to give away some of that yarn. So let's talk about the giveaway for this week. The giveaway for this week was a finished object made from Mandela Fluffy. Very, very pretty. I love this. I made myself one and I made some of my girlfriends one for Christmas out of the Mandela Fluffy. It's, it's so soft. It's almost as soft as my sweater. <laughs> It's really soft and beautiful and it's made in more of a actually closer to spring colors I don't know why they made mandel fluffy in spring colors but it's beautiful I like it Boy winner number two will receive two balls of mandel fluffy in the colorway anemone and which is the same color that this is made from so this is what it looks like made up it's really pretty I love the colors in that very kind of springy but still warm so it's kind of fun i will give you two balls of that for giveaway winner number two receive that giveaway winner number three will receive two balls of fire goby and i think these are fish names i'm pretty sure fish are fish are very beautiful in the ocean some of them are very colorful and my guess is that's where these colors come from but this is the fire goby very beautiful and there'll be two balls of that given to give away winner number three. So let's point the camera to the computer and find out who wins these three fluffy gifts. We're pointing our camera to the computer. I have, I have entered the URL right there and the keyword was fluffy. So let's find out how many people put the keyword fluffy in their comments and that would be 365. That's a lot of people. Thank you so much. I think that's a record. So let's go over here and find out who wins the finished object, which is the Mandela Fluffy Cowl. And that would be Halo, Halo, excuse me, Halo One Baby Weaver. And there's the word Fluffy in her comment. So congratulations to Halo One Baby Weaver. Weaver and let's pick another winner. So let's go up here. I have to go down here. It says pick another winner. So let's go right there. This is the winner number two. We'll win the an Anemone Mandela Fluffy, which is the pink and green. Anita Kalista. Anita Kalista. You have won the fluffy yarn. And there it is, her word right there in her comment. So let's find out who wins giveaway gift number three, which is the color Fire Goby and two fluffies. Melanie MR. Melanie MR. And that's probably a picture of Melanie right there. Fluffy is nice this time of year. Thank you, Melanie. 
you are the winner of the Fire Gobi yarn. Congratulations to everyone. Please email me your mailing address and I will get those out to you right away. Now for next week's giveaway, Monday, I will choose a winner to win some yarn that I found in my stash. I have a lot of comfy cotton and I know y'all like it, so I have not got enough time to make up all this comfy cotton and I thought I would start giving some of it away. Here are two cakes of this. This is Enchanting Embers. Beautiful, beautiful. Now you can get this at I believe it was uh, Walmart. I think is where I bought this. I'm not sure, but I bought this um, not too long ago, and I had a plan to make a short sleeve top out of it, and I probably won't have time to do that. So I'm giving this away. This is Enchanting Embers. If you're not familiar with Comfy Cotton, it is a wonderful yarn from Lion Brand. It's a size three cotton, and it's a it's a good size three. It's not. It's not real tiny. It's a good size three. And I've had people tell me they substitute it for a four because it is a little bit fat. Here it is right here. It's a pretty good size yarn. It's not that small. And it's half cotton, half polyester. On each cake are 392 yards. So I have two cakes of this and I'm going to give this away to a winner next Monday. So I would like to invite you to place a comment down in the description box and write the word comfy, C-O-M-F-Y. Now you have to spell it right, C-O-M-F-Y. Write that in your comment and you'll be in the running for the giveaway next Monday. So good luck to everyone. Thank you for participating. I appreciate you all. I love my subscribers. Y'all are the best in the world. It's those comments that come in, I, there's so many of them and I read them. I try to read all of them. The comments are so sweet. Thank you so much for your suggestions, your comments, and your questions. I try to answer the questions on the comments, but if you happen to find out that I have missed your question, please send it to me again, or you can email it to me at genie at onthehookcrochet.com. If you have a specific question, I'll be glad to answer it to you. And if, um, like in today's video, someone had asked me about how to um, crochet this sweater. They had the pattern, but they were not real clear about how to do it. And I hope that helped you. If you plan to make a sweater where the sleeves are crocheted right into the top, it's a great way to crochet. I love to do it. It uh, is not for someone who might want a fitted sleeve. That you would probably need to just make your fabric and then, uh, uh, you know, crochet the sleeve around in the different direction. You'd be crocheting this way. On this sleeve, you crochet this way. I decrease at the cuff. So uh, for me, that works fine. I love sleeves that are plenty roomy. Move around in them. They're very, very comfortable. I have probably said that too much today, but I will be back later in the week with a giveaway from last week. Last week's late week video was the Karen cake and it's the rose scented color and that is in the giveaway and I think I have a surprise for you as well. So join me again on Thursday and let's find out what's on the hook.